friends, thank you so much for being here. My name's David, and as always, I'm grateful to share these practices with you. If it's your first time joining me, please have a blanket, pillow, um, something comfortable to lay down. You can be on your bed, on your couch. If you have a yoga mat, you can be on your yoga mat. But today's practice is a yoga nidra meditation, which is uh, basically means yogic sleep. Now, most of you have gone through a practice like this already with me, um, but just to kind of rehash on it, it's just a physical relaxation practice. So, uh, as always, starting off with breath work, staying up with the breath, so slowing the breath down, being more present with it, and then from that space, checking in with our bodies, doing just a touch more breath work, getting used to holding our breath and retaining the breath, and then from there, moving more into a body relaxation. And the whole point of the yoga nidra is that we have a lot of different things going on in our lives. Work, school, uh, children for some of us, maintaining our homes. There's a lot of little details that go into our day, not to mention all some of the extraneous stuff that we do too. And as we go through the day, sometimes we get a little bit misaligned. Uh, we sometimes pick up, uh, I'm a little leery sometimes using the word energy because it has such a loaded word, but we pick up tough stuff from the day. We read the news, it inflames us a little bit, literally. Um, we might see something on social media, it might piss us off or upset us a little bit and trigger us. So then we start to carry this cloud of energy around with us and take things personal and sometimes without being aware of it, we can start to put that onto other people. And so part of the yoga nidra practice is to just pull it back a little bit and go, okay, get back with the body again, relax the tension that may have built up from the day, let go of things a little bit and see how it progresses from that space. Um, the teaching that I bring today, um, there's a yogi by the name of Yogi Sachinananda, and um, I love some of these old time teachers. Um, they shared so much, and the nice thing about what they shared is they didn't have the types of distractions that we have today. Yes, there is distractions for them, but not the type of distractions that we experience. Um, so I still find that they're, in reviewing their works, um, just so poignant and very potent. And one of the things he said was, We are what our thoughts have made us, so take care about what you think. Words are secondary. Thoughts live. They travel far. Meaning, it is our thoughts about who we are and what we want to be and what we want to collect and what we want to do that makes us, makes the idea of us, of who that idea is. But we need to be careful about what it is we think and contemplate on and let be a constant focus because sometimes that stuff if we're not aware of it, begins to turn into words which we start to share with others. Those words can turn into actions. Those actions can turn into habits. Those habits can turn into a character that we play out, which ends up being our destination. Now, the nice part is, if you're arriving here right now, the destination is this, right? Not bad. But it's learning to watch this stuff. Because everywhere we go, we take our thoughts with it, like a little tote bag, so to speak. And if we aren't watchful of these thoughts, and if we have an attachment to these thoughts, they're going to travel everywhere we go. And sometimes without realizing it, we may say things that we don't intend to, and all of a sudden offend somebody else, make someone else angry. And we say, might say to ourselves, oh, I don't care. But if we are really doing the work and walking the walk, then we're being a little bit more present about what we're acting out as, what our habits are, what we are choosing to say and put out into the world, because words have power. Undoubtedly, words have power. So remembering that our thoughts go with us everywhere we go, and our thoughts have an innate power to them. Now, where do thoughts come from? They're passed down. They're passed down through our education systems, our philosophical belief systems, our religious systems, our career and parental systems. We just happen to catch that conditioning. And without realizing it or not, we continue that condition and push it forward. And it can be sometimes negative conditioning if we are not watching it. 
which means that we might be passing that on to our kids, we might be passing that on to our neighbors, we might be passing that on to a complete stranger. So watching our words, watching our thoughts, bringing it back to the present moment. And I use this metaphor a lot, but thoughts are always coming and going. They are a phenomenal event inside the head. I can't make my head at this point stop thinking. I can't make that little voice turn off, but what I can do is watch that voice. I can self-inquire about that voice. I can ask that voice, who are you speaking to? And that brings me back to the present moment because if I can create space between the constant monkey mind, the chitter chatter, and be still with it, which is a huge teaching, be still. A lot of people have said that. But being still with it all, we begin to create a separation. And in that separation, instead of just reacting or speaking about every little thing going on in our heads, we begin to catch ourselves. We begin to see past those thoughts. And we can start to move our way down to our hearts. We can start to reroute ourselves back into our bodies again instead of being up in this headspace up here. I'm not here to say that the head is bad or anything like that. The head provides marvelous, incredible information. But at the same time, it can also be to our own detriment if we're not watching it. He said, you have to grow from the inside out. None can... And it looks like it did reconnect. Good. So if you missed that last part, yay for quarantines and all the, uh, um, all the uh, internet connection stuff that we all see and experience. But one thing that that's taught me is to be a little bit more patient. Now, if you didn't hear what I said last time, he said, you have to grow from the inside out. None can teach you. None can make you spiritual. There is no other teacher but your own soul. Spirituality comes out naturally. It doesn't have to look like uh, uh, what we might think it has to look like. Spirituality is very personal to ourselves. We can talk about spirituality, we can speak about spirituality, but at the end of the day, it all comes up to ourselves and what it is that we're connecting to. And at the end of the day, too, you are the guru. The teachers that may be outside of you and sharing their teachings and practices, they're just sharing what they love. But part of this also is for you to connect to that inner guru, that inner knowing. Because all guru means is one of knowing. And to remind each other, as Ram Das said, we're all just walking each other home. We are all just reminding each other of our own innate powers that we have and to learn to connect to that. So with that said, I like to speak a lot. I'm sorry. It's just, uh, I love this topic and I love doing this work. So um, bear with me. We're going to pop into our meditation now. So find yourself a comfortable position. Please close your eyes. And as you close your eyes, let's begin. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Om. Friends, family, brothers and sisters, let us close our eyes this evening and look inward. And as we look inward, let us look inward with joy, with strength and with courage. As we look inward, let us accept what it is that shows up for us. Let us forgive if there is forgiveness needed. Let us be grateful for these moments that we have. Let us love ourselves a little bit more. And as we arrive into our practice, let go of your day. Let go of your week. Let go of what's next and what's to come. Let's put everything down for now. Allow things to be as they are. Let the body come to rest. Let the mind do what the mind does. Just start to observe thoughts as they come and go. 
No need to attach to any one particular thought, as our thoughts have a tendency to pull us from the present moment. Even thinking about the present moment pulls us out of the present moment. Because we are not fully engaged with it, we are giving our energy towards the thinking process. Place your awareness on your breath, the inhales and the exhales. Feel the breath moving in and out of your body naturally, effortlessly. Observe the depth of the breath, the pace of the breath, and the balance in the breath. Let's begin to breathe together. Please take a long, slow, deep breath in. Fill your lungs all the way up. Exhale, letting it go. Long, slow, deep breath in. Please fill your lungs up. Again, long, slow, deep breath in, slowing everything down. Exhale, letting it go. And long, slow, deep breath in, fill lungs up. Exhale, letting it go. Continue to breathe on your own. As you breathe on your own, relaxing into your body. Scan from your head to your toes, using this brief period just to check in. Where is there tension? Where is there tightness, soreness, imbalances of any kind that are showing up for you in this moment? And as we move deeper into our practice, stay focused on the breath, let go of what you can, and allow yourself to be here in the present moment. Let's deepen our breath just a few times, working on breath retention. Please take a long, slow, deep breath in, feel the navel rise, chest expand, collarbone spread, shoulders down the back, long spine, relax the face, lips, eyes, mouth, and forehead. Hold your breath, the top of the inhale. Hold for five. Four, three, two, one. Exhale, letting it go, emptying the lungs completely. Smooth breath. 
breath in, fill your lungs up. And exhale, letting it go. Breath retention again. Please take another long, slow, deep breath in. Feel the navel rise, chest expand, collarbone spread, shoulders down the back, long spine. Relax the face, lift eyes, mouth, and forehead. Hold your breath at the top. Holding the breath for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, letting it go. Smooth breath in, fill lungs up. Smooth breath out, exhale, letting it go. And one more time. Long, slow, deep breath in, filling the lungs all the way up to the top. Belly rises, chest expands, collarbones spread, shoulders down the back, long spine. Relax the face, lift eyes, mouth and forehead. Hold your breath at the top of the inhale. Hold for five, four, three, Two, one, exhale, letting it go. Smooth breath in, we fill our lungs up. And exhale, letting it go. Continue to breathe on your own. And as we scan through our bodies and relax into our bodies, be here now in the present moment. Starting with the top of the head. Relax the top of the head. Feel the top of the head release any muscle tension. Feel that move downwards to the temples and the sides of the head. Letting all the stress of the day drain out. Let us not hold on to it any longer. Relax the area around the ears, the outer ears, and the inner ear. Allow yourself to be at ease. Let sounds, even my voice, just gently pass through. Relax the back of the head. No heavy lifting needed. No thoughts need to be picked up. Feel the back of the head 
the back of the skull relax and release. Relax the forehead, the area around the hairline, the eyebrows, the area between the eyebrows. Feel the facial muscles release. Let go of your day. No need to fight what is no longer here. Let it pass, release it, let it go. Relax the area around the nose. Relax your cheek. Relax the jaw, jawline, the area beneath the nose, the lips, the tongue, the entire mouth. Let the entire face and head relax and be at ease. Relax the neck, all seven vertebrae of the neck, from the base of the skull down to the tops of your shoulders, our neck releases and we let go. Breath by breath, relaxing into the present relaxing into our bodies. No finger needs to be lifted. Relax your throat. The top of the throat, the middle of the throat, and the base of the throat. Relax your shoulders. Feel the tops of your shoulders release. The backs of the shoulders drop down. We relax the sides of the shoulders and the fronts of the shoulders. Relaxing the upper arms, the biceps, the triceps. Relaxing the elbows, the fronts of the elbows, the backs of the elbows. Relaxing the forearms. Let the hands come to rest. Feel the palms relax, the wrists relax, the backs of the hands relax. Relaxing your thumbs, the index fingers, 
the middle finger, the ring finger, the pinky finger, let go. Surrendering to the present, not fighting it, not fighting our thoughts, not fighting our bodies, not fighting the breath, just here, now, relaxing, breathing deep. Long, slow, deep breath in, fill lungs up. Let the collarbone spread. Feel your chest releasing, relaxing. Feel the rib cage relax. Feel the side back relax. Every inhale, the chest expands just a little more. Relax the belly, the abdomen. the lower rib cage, feel it release. Feel the upper back relax. The thoracic spine. Vertebrae by vertebrae, the entire back releases down towards the ground. Feel the lower back. Let go of any tension. Let the back release. Whatever we've been carrying, holding on to, supporting, offload it for now. Give yourself a well-deserved break. Relax the side waist and sides of the back. release, any tension, any pain, feel the buttocks relax and the pelvis relax. Deep 
breath in, fill your lungs all the way up. Exhale, letting it go. Relax the legs, the upper legs, the knees and the lower legs. Feel the backs of the knees release, the hamstrings, the calves. Relax the ankles, the feet, and the toes, the big toes, second toe, middle toe, fourth toe, and pinky toe. The entire body. Relaxing downward. Feel the floor beneath you and the air that surrounds you. Let it all go. Letting go of control, just surrender, relax, trust that this moment has you right where you are. Remain unattached to any thoughts that may come up any sensations, any emotions. Long, slow, deep breath in. Exhale. of the meditation, just be with your body, be with the breath, observe thoughts come and go. Trust that you are right where you need to be right now.
to the breath and to the body, to the inhales and the exhales. 
Begin to lightly move the fingers and move the toes. Circle out your wrists and ankles. Roll the shoulders up, back, and down. Turning your head to the left and to the right. And as we come back towards center on an inhale, reach the arms up and over the head. Give yourself a nice long stretch. And on the exhale, release the arms down alongside. And placing a gentle bend in your knees, please roll over to your left side. Use the right hand, press yourself up, come into a comfortable seated position. And just placing our hands over our hearts. It's that little chant I was singing, um, I release control and surrender to the flow of love that will heal me. And love is a healing agent. Many times we push it away. Many times we say we don't deserve it or we're not worthy of it. Many times we're just trying to understand what love is. And in that understanding process, instead of embracing it, we are trying to look at it and see what it is. In my own practice, I can say at first it used to put me off when I would hear things like that because I thought it was crazy. And then I realized that it takes time and practice to really let these things come in and settle in. And love is a deep, deep, deep vibration. We all carry it. Sometimes it may be a little bit on the misguided side from our understanding of it, but it just takes time and practice, sort of like it takes time flying a plane to be a good pilot, or it takes time to practice handstand multiple times in order to go upside down and hold it. But like anything, the more we practice it, the more we embrace it and not push it away, the more we can relax into it, the more of a second nature and first nature it actually becomes. And the Yoga Nidra meditation is a way for us to just relax into our bodies to be able to receive again. Because when we're holding tension, it's very difficult to receive. The Dalai Lama said, the moment you think of others, this automatically opens your inner door. Through that way, you can communicate with others very easily, without any difficulties. The moment you think just of yourself and disregard others, then because of your own attitude, you also get the feeling that other people also have a similar attitude towards you. That brings suspicion and fear. The result, you lose your inner calmness. And so the more that we realize this and make this time that we're here about others, not just our selfish self or what it is that we might be desiring or wanting in the moment, really considering others, we really can change this world. It starts small and it grows bigger. It starts with the work that we do and it works its way outwards. Let's all take a deep breath and fill lungs up. Exhale, let it go. Just bowing our head down towards our hands. Honoring ourselves today, our practices for showing up on our mats. We honor our friends, families, loved ones, and supporters. In gratitude for the many blessings, gifts, and the abundance that we have in our lives. And in gratitude to the teachers and guides that came along before us and walked along before us that passed along these practices called yoga. Releasing the hands down, softly opening the eyes, lifting your chins. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining me. I appreciate you. I appreciate you being a part of this community. Please let myself and my partner, Shelly, and our family know how we can help you. And certainly, if we need help, we are be happy to make sure that's put out there, too. But we're just so grateful for not only the online community, but the community down here in the South Bay and the many people that we get a chance to reach out through, whether it's through meditation or yoga or through Shelly's cooking and her education courses through nutrition. So... We're grateful for you. Have a beautiful evening. Please reach out if you need anything. Ho'oponopono aho. Namaste, friends.